the son of God, Yuhaba, was shut down, busted up, and weakened for 1,000 years by none other than the strongest soul reapers in history, the original Gotei 13. For 21 years, apart from being a notorious Black Ops squad, they were a mystery. But now, with the anime only flashback and this image drawn by Kuba himself, we finally get a glimpse at their history, which begins with the establishment of the Gote 13 itself. But to delve into that, we have to rewind a little bit. Yeah, a little bit more than that. Okay, just go all the way back. Thousands of years ago. Serete was a land of death, a place without order, where terrifying monsters and souls rampaged, causing chaos and destruction. The only ones who maintained order during this time were people known as balancers, who suppressed these wild creatures and, as the name suggests, maintained relative balance throughout the free worlds, being the realm of the living, soul society, and lastly, Hyukkomundo, ultimately preventing its collapse. To do this, they had to ensure perfect harmony between between the souls passing through the world of the living, along with dealing with unwanted hollows by handling them correctly through purification. But soul society itself needed to be governed, ensuring order throughout the realm. So Genryusai Yamamoto decided to create an organization to take a better hold of the chaos, a black op unit with an organized hierarchy and structure, together with other strong people such as Yachiru Onohana, the first Gote 13 was formed. Now this Gotei 13 was completely different compared to the one we see during the events of the main story. Yamamoto was much more brutal during this era as he viewed even his own subordinates as expendable and used violence to enforce order. This is also reflected by the other members as Yuhaba explains that these Gotei 13 were defenders in name only as they consisted of a brutal mob of killers. Each member had a key trait of violence, possessing a strong fighting prowess and being exceptionally powerful. Because of their nature, they were a force to be feared, which instilled order throughout soul society. In this era, the importance of keeping the balance of souls meant stability for the universe itself, so Yamamoto's job wasn't a joke. However, the Quincy's had their own objectives in mind, like the complete annihilation of Hollows. Sadly, this goal would jeopardize the balance of souls and we all know old man Yamamoto cannot be having earthquakes during his tea time so he made it his mission to wipe out every single Quincy. Now you might be thinking they had it coming but we're talking about a complete culling. This would eventually lead to a full-on conflict with a young Yuha bar but Gotei 13 was so OP that they destroyed every single Quincy that came their way. Their combined power was said to be the strongest force Soul Society had ever come across. Yep, <laughs> stronger than Ichigo Dunga guy super saint 6 <laughs> I'm taking a piss. Stop the cow. <laughs> to understand how exactly strong this squad was, let's go over every single member. Pause. Did you know that in an interview, Kuba admitted that Saint Seiya was a big inspiration for Bleach? Someone should tell him that it's the one year anniversary of Saint Seiya Legends of Justice. Not only is it already one of the best strategy mobile anime games to celebrate this milestone, they are releasing a god cloth Pegasus Seiya. So don't miss out on all the amazing amazing events and benefits as by downloading the game using our link below you'll get a 1000 draw gift so do it now starting with Yamamoto and Unohana. These two are some of the strongest members of Soul Society, both in the era of inception and the modern day. Yamamoto was a stern, diligent and strong captain. In fact, he was considered the strongest soul reaper to ever exist, where his bunkai alone could destroy the entirety of Soul Society. Unlike any other captain, Yamamoto lived for thousands of years and maintained his leadership role of the first division, until sadly his demise at the hands of you, her bar. Unohana, on the other hand, was once the most feared convict in the whole Serete, as well as the first Kempachi. However, she was eventually recruited by Yamamoto and swore loyalty to Gotei 13. Her presence in the early stage of the squad's inception gave her the reputation of the most ruthless Shinigami to exist. This was because Unohana had an intense desire to keep fighting so she could bathe in the blood of her enemies. The flashback in the anime also tells us that her battles with 
the Quincy's and you Hoppa happened after her meeting with Kempachi, as the scar he gave her is seen present on her. And like Yamamoto, she survived through countless years of battle, maintaining her position as a later captain, and only died in her objective to unlock Zaraki Kampachi's Bunkai. Moving on to the members not in the manga, let's start with Chika Shihoin. As his name suggests, Chika is a member of the Shihoin clan, making him the ancestor of Yurichi, who just like her, Chika has that sexy darker skin tone and yellow eyes. It's also obvious that he was the first captain of squad 2 due to him being a member of the Shihoin clan. He must have led the god of heavenly granted armaments and was the caretaker of the treasured tools, which are said to have been bestowed to the clan by the gods. With this, Chika also led the Omitsukido of his time, which would suggest he displayed masterful assassin and stealth skills. And though not much is known about Chika's ability, we do know that he had an insane spiritual pressure and strength, which allowed him to kill a Quincy with a single kick. When speculating about his abilities, it's likely similar to his descendant Yorichi. And of course, Chika is an expert in Kido and Hakuda, as we see him solely rely on it whilst dispatching enemy soldiers. And like Yurichi, Chika could have used lightning abilities with his Zanpakuto, as these lightning techniques would have been passed down through the ages, where eventually being used by Yurichi herself. Next up, we have Kinroku Izuhara, the first captain of Squad 3. What makes him stand out in this picture are his glasses. There's a trend in Bleach, where characters Kuba draws with glasses tend to have a conniving and manipulative nature. Perfect example, of course, being Aizen and Espada number 8. This means that Izuhara was a capable leader, despite his cold-hearted nature. As for his strength, Izuhara was very powerful. Along with having an insane spiritual pressure, he was a master swordsman, having complete control over Zanjutsu, one of the four main sword styles of Gote 13. We see this during the battle against the Quincy's, where Izuhara calculated precise slashes aimed at the throats of his enemies. This also further supports his big brain calculative nature. Then we have Chigiri Shijima, the first captain of squad 4. In the current era, this squad is responsible for healing. However, before Unohana, there was no such concept of a relief division. So Shijima, like the other captains was a pure and utter savage. His swordsmanship is also incredible as he was able to decapitate several Quincy's with just a sealed Zompok door. Now this could be reaching a bit but Shijima looks very similar to Gin due to his pale and closed eyes. Not much is known about Gin's family so perhaps he is a descendant of Shijima. If this is the case then Shijima would share some abilities with Gin, mainly his expertise in Shumpo and Kido. The first captain of squad 5, Danjiro Obana, is up next. Now, he's a lot harder to analyze than the others, as half of his face is covered. However, his mannerism, face structure, and sideburns, from what we can see, reminds us of the Shiba clan. Despite not sharing their names, it's possible that Obana is somehow related. Let's not forget, Ichigo is also from the Shiba clan, but doesn't don his family name. So, if this is the case, it would mean that Danjiro is actually an ancestor of Ichigo's. But to add to that, Danjiro's hair also indicates an ancestry to Matsumoto, meaning he might be the bridge between their family. But what we know for certain is just like the other members of Gote 13, Obuna is a master swordsman who was able to defeat Quincy's whilst precisely dismembering them. If he is an ancestor of both Ishin and Ichigo, it would be possible that Obuna has a technique similar to Getsuga Tensho, where perhaps it's an evolution of his original technique. This moves us on to Furoshushi Saito, the first captain of squad 6. What makes her stand out are two purple pigtails and her eye patch, reminding us a lot about Zaraki Kempachi. She definitely encompasses the cold hearted nature of this original Gote 13. However, the character Saito resembles the most is Riruka from the Full Bring Up. Perhaps she's her ancestor and had kids when she was alive in the world of the living. But what's more certain is that she must have had great spiritual pressure, something akin to Zaraki Kempachi. In fact, even the sharpness of her sword reminds us of him. And just by going with the way she fights, it's certain that she uses brute force instead of Kido and other abilities used by Shinigamis. But much like the other original members, Saito is for sure 
sadistic as seen when she blitzed through multiple Quincy's while smiling in their rain of blood. The original Squad 7 captain Nobutsuna Shigio is up next. I guess all the Squad 7 captains are always gonna stand out a bit more because this guy's design is crazy, all right? Bro has pale skin with his rib cage showing. He legit looks like a walking skeleton with the hair. <laughs> Bro escaped from a walking dead set. Regardless, he seems to be a true killer though. As for who he might be connected to, well, the current captain of Squad 7, Komamura. This is due to the fur coat he wears, which seems like a subtle hint from Kubo that he would eventually become one of the first werewolves and establish the werewolf clan. The members of this clan were banished to the realm of the beasts for their transgressions they committed as humans. So maybe Shigio went rogue after the war with the Quincy's, resulting in him being sent to the realm of the beasts and his descendants eventually making their way back to Soul Society. If this is the case, that would give Shigio enhanced spiritual awareness along with his incredible spiritual powers and use it to easily overcome the Quincy. This guy's design alone makes him ferocious, but if he is in fact a member of the werewolf clan, it would make him even scarier. The next captain is the first captain of Squad 8, Batsu Unsai Katori. Her design is pretty simple and what makes her stand out are her glasses and long hair. She seems to be a logical person, using her mind to assess and judge scenarios. And she looks very similar to Lisa Yodomaru, perhaps having a distant familial connection. But we don't exactly need that to see what her powers are though, because unlike a majority of the captains on this list, we actually see her Shikai. While it's unnamed, it takes the form of a long spear with a white double-edged blade. It is very similar to Ikaku's Hyozuki Maru, perhaps signifying a connection between them. While using this weapon, Katori demonstrated incredible proficiency with it, using it to chop soldiers with ease. This shows us that Katori not only exemplified great spiritual pressure, but was also an expert in Naginatai Jutsu, a traditional Japanese martial art that focuses on mastering a spear. Also, she might be one of the weaker members because almost all the other ones didn't have to use their Shikai to kill a bunch of Quincy's, but she does. Inetsu Komoi was the first captain of Squad 9. Yep, we all saw it. His teeth are yellow as the shining sun in a winter's day. Like, goddamn, dude, go to the dentist, not the barber. I now this character actually shares the same last name as Gyokaku Kumoi. Who? Right, y'all didn't see the bleach fillers? Let me let me educate you. Kumoi is one of the clan leaders that serves the Kasumoji clan. Just by looking at him, you can see the similar facial structure. Now Gyokaku only appearing in a filler arc might be like, yo, this guy don't exist. But it seems like Kubo is trying to make a connection between the original manga and the anime filler here. But they can't be real, right? The Bound arc can't be real. Yeah, I remember the first time I watched Bleach, I thought the entire Bound arc was canon. I was like, Ichigo was already in the Soul Society. <laughs> like Katori, we also see Komoi Shikai taking the form of a thin kanabo comprised of a long dark blue rod with rings. It kind of looks like a bamboo shoe. What makes Komoi truly formidable is his incredible strength as he was able to crush a Quincy's body in a single blow. And I, I bet his power has something to do with his teeth because no way that's by choice. Next up is Furuki Otogawa, the first captain of Squad 10. His design is awesome awesome because he has a straw hat and I love One Piece, all right? But that straw hat also distinguishes himself from the other members of the original Gote 13 because they all might want to be the Soul King or the Captain Commander, but my guy wants to be the Pirate King. But this hat is actually often associated with the Samurais of Feudal Japan, which would signify he has great stealth and speed. Like Yuha said, Otagawa seems to have the face of a cold-hearted killer, which is demonstrated when he brutally murdered countless Quincy with a face as cold as stone, showcasing his great spiritual pressure. Now, this character, despite not sharing the same name, looks very similar to Byakuya, which would make him an ancestor of the Kuchiki clan, one of the noble houses. The Kuchiki clan is tasked with protecting the history of Soul Society, so maybe this captain established the first records of the Soul Society after the battle with the Lindenreich. If he is, in fact, an ancestor of Byakuya, it's likely he demonstrated great skill in Kido. Shunpo 
and Hakuda, as well as high intuition, which is a trend seen in the members of the Kuchiki clan. Next up is the first ever captain of squad 12, Uhin Zinzozi. This guy stands out due to his round figure, his thin braided hair with it being shaved in the middle and the red line markings on his face that take the shape of a U. Something important to note is that the 12th division was never about research until 110 years ago. So Jinzoji has no connection to science whatsoever. He also doesn't resemble any person in Bleach as his design is awfully distinct. Therefore, we can't draw any familial connections. However, this guy is still an absolute beast. Along with his great spiritual pressure, Jinzoji also has incredible strength. During the invasion of the Quincy, he was able to dispatch two enemies at the same time by crushing their heads with minimum effort. His design certainly shows that he was quite strong. Just look at the dude, he, he, he built like a truck. Which means that he's one of the most physical members of the Gote 13 due to his girth. Finally, we have the first captain of the 13th division. Now surely this guy has to be just as good looking as Yushiro. Right? Nope, that's Choso's brother. Uh, you know, you know, in JJK, uh, Choso's brother, he Itadori killed him. This is where he ended up. He became the captain of the first 13th squad. <laughs> Saizo Sakahone is one of, if not the oldest looking man in Bleach. With his hunched back skeletal figure and one pure black eye, this makes him seem more like a walking corpse as opposed to a soul reaper. It seems that Sakahone is the oldest soul reaper we have seen to date, preceding even Yamamoto. Sakaone shares the same name as the Sakaone district of East Rukogai. Perhaps the district was named in his honor. Ironically, this is where Yushiro is from too, creating a connection between these two captains of the 13th division. Despite his old and deprecated form, Sakaone was a monster on the battlefield, displaying great spiritual pressure and battle life as he easily slew multiple Quincy. Due to his age, it's likely that he was a balancer or at least a skilled fighter for a long time, at least a couple of hundred years. Imagining what this character would be like in their peak is just giving me nightmares. With the potential hell arc on the horizon for Bleach, there is a chance we may actually get to see these captains in action, as it seems like this arc will be bringing back old deceased captains as villains, and the original Gote 13 would be an amazing cast of characters to see going up against the likes of Ichigo and the current Gote 13. Why would they reveal their pictures and names if they weren't gonna do an arc with them, you know? So they're definitely coming back guys anyway if you like this video watch the video on screen next because that's another banger bleach video